programa.
wow, there's something about that name of Jesus. Welcome all who is on Facebook Live and who is on the Trinity Baptist prayer line this morning. We want to thank you to this morning's worship service. I'm so excited about the message that the Lord has for us today. As my son makes his way to do our opening scripture, I want you to listen to the title that the Lord has gave us as Joshua comes. It says, faith, it says, have faith, I am on the way. We will be reading from two scriptures today. One book, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, and John 14, verse 27 to 29. So Joshua, as he comes, he will read our scripture for us this morning. John 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and that way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John fourteen twenty seven through 29. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away. And come again unto you. If ye love me, ye will rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Amen. Thank you, son. Wow, what an encouraging reading. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, starts out with saying, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. These had to be encouraging words for the disciples when Jesus spoke them because there were some trying times going on during that time. The Roman soldiers, the Jews, all were seeking to kill Jesus Christ and there was a crisis going on. And Jesus was saying, hey, I got to go away, but I'll come again. So he was telling his disciples, and I believe he is telling us today, is let not your heart be troubled. We have some situations going on with this COVID, with these riots, but God is telling us, let not your heart be troubled. I don't know about you, but I needed to hear that this morning, that we don't need to be troubled about the things that are going on. Because as we find out here, Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And as we look at the next verse, he says, I love this one. We quote this all the time. Verse two says, in my father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I don't know about you, but if Jesus is going to prepare a place for you, it's going to be a dynamite place. It is going to be a place that when we get there, we're going to say it's all worth it. Right now, we're going through some stuff. But if I know that Jesus is gone to prepare a place for me, I can have hope in that. I hope you can have hope in that when Jesus said he's gone to prepare a place. And I love what he says here. In my father's house are many mansions. This mansions are talking about the different people that's going to make it up. He says, I am going 
to prepare a place. There are many mansions. There's many nations that's going to be in the Father's house. Not just one group, not just one color, but it says many mansions, many dwelling places are going to be in the house of God. And he is preparing this place for us. I don't know about you, but when someone prepares something special for you, that's awesome. I know when my wife is preparing something, a special meal for me, my birthday's coming up in a couple of weeks, and she prepares something for me. Man, how does that make you feel? Christians, I'm encouraging you today that Jesus is gone to prepare a place for you, and it is going to be awesome. The next thing here, look at verse 3. He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, here we go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He says, I'm going, I'm preparing a place, but the good news is, I'm coming back. And guess what? Where I am, there will you be also. I don't care what type of mansion I got, as long as I'm where Jesus is, I'm excited. I'm satisfied with what the master has for me. He is going to prepare a place and he will come again and receive us unto himself. And he said, where he is, that's where we'll be also. Isn't it nice to be just in the presence of the Lord? Some of the best worship services we've ever had when we're in the presence of the Lord, when we can just sit with him and he can feed us and then we can eat and have fellowship with him. Now look at verse four. This is what I want to pay attention to here. Verse four saying, whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. So Jesus is telling the disciples, hey, you know where I go, and you know the way. So Jesus is always telling us things that happen before they happen. So he was telling the disciples, hey, you know. But look at verse 5. Mr. Thomas, Dalton Thomas. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, I want you to think about that. Jesus had just told them they know the way, but he says he doesn't. Mm. He doesn't know the way. How many times Jesus has told us something, but we get like doubting Thomas, and we don't believe? Down as Thomas says here, I know not whether thou goest, or how can we know the way? And then verse 6, our favorite verse. Jesus saith unto him, get this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We will only get to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ plainly tells Thomas and the disciples that he's the way, that he's the truth, and that he's the life. And he's telling that to us today, that he is the way. So no matter what you're going through, we want, the Bible is saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He's saying Jesus Christ. And then as we look at our other scripture that my son read, John 14, 27 to 29. The first verse says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world giveth, give I you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus saying that he has left peace with us. He has given us peace where we don't have to be troubled. And he also said, don't be afraid. 
So many times, why does he say don't be afraid? Because Satan's tactic is to get us afraid. Whenever he's getting us afraid, we are not having faith in him. We're having faith in others, having faith within ourselves. But he tells us that he has given us peace that passeth all understanding. And he said he gave us this peace, not as the world gave it. Thank God for that. Because when the world gives you something, it's not real. One, they're going to take it away from you, and it's not going to last. But the peace that God, Jesus, gives us will last forever. And then verse 28, it says, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, you re rejoice, because I said, I go unto my Father, and my Father is greater than I. There he has it again. He is telling us that he must go away. He's preparing that place. And then he says he's going to come again. We want Christ to come, but the disciples didn't want him to go. In order to get him to come back, he had to go. And I'm telling you, the things that we're going through in our world today, Jesus told us about these things. And this is verse 29. Look at verse 29 here. It says, now have I told you before it come to pass. Did not Jesus tell us that in the last days, perilous times shall come? Well, if we believe that, perilous times has to come. But when we're in perilous times, we're, what, we're afraid, we're complaining, we don't have peace, that means we're not trusting God. In verse 29, he says, and now I have told you before it come to pass. He has warned us. He has been giving us messages. I don't know if you've been listening to him these last few weeks, but he has been warning us about these things that will come to pass before. And then he says that when it come to pass, you might believe. Folks, in order to get to we have to go through. Jesus was saying, hey, I told you these things. I want you to have peace. I don't want you to be troubled. But when these things come, know that I am with you. Just like our title says, have faith. I'm on the way. Now, I want to give you some encouragement here today. I hope you take this scripture down. And we're going to talk about what Jesus is telling us to do here. It's Romans chapter 12, verse 12. I'll repeat that because I want you to get that down. Romans 12, verse 12. And I'm going to read it. It says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. We must have hope, and our hope has to be in Jesus Christ. If we have no hope, we die, and we're men most miserable. Jesus Christ is our hope of glory. Look what Hebrews 11.1 1 says. This is a verse I think many are aware of. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We must have faith in God that he will deliver us from whatever we're going through. And I like this scripture because it tells us to rejoice in hope. That means rejoice means we have to do it again. Sometimes we're down and we need to encourage ourselves. We go to God's word and God's word will lift us up. We have to rejoice in hope. So whenever we get God's word 
and open it. And we find that scripture that settles our soul. My favorite one is Psalms um, 23, verse one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm rejoicing in the hope of Jesus. Now, we have to know where our hope comes from. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. It says, for the which cause I also suffer these things. See, we got to suffer. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto that day. Know whom you believe. Know where your hope in. Don't put your hope in another person. Don't put your hope in a government system. Put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ because then we can rejoice. We know that Jesus Christ has done some things. He died for our sin. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. We can rejoice in his hope. Now, the next scripture said, the verse, it says, patient and tribulation. Here's the problem. Patient and tribulation. Whenever we're going through some things, we want to figure out how we're going to solve the problem. But Jesus is saying, be patient, my child. I'm like, when Moses and then was trapped at the Red Sea. Moses told him, stand still and see the salvation of God. Sometimes when we're in a tragedy, when we're in tribulation, we simply need to stand and wait for the Lord. We, I know we wanted to move quickly. We want to get out of here. It's giving us trouble. But Jesus is working on us. He's telling us to be patient in tribulation because that's showing that we have faith in him. When we have faith in him, we're going to be patient. No matter what's going on around us, we're just going to have faith that he is going to take care of us. That's what I want you to get today is that no matter what you're going through, he'll take care of you. I want you to look at this verse here. Write this verse down. John 16, 33. We're almost done. John 16, 33. I'm going to speed it up here. John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Wow. Jesus tells us that we are going to have tribulation in the world. But he tells us, hey, be of good cheer. I've overcome it. So therefore, we can find that peace in the midst of a storm because Jesus says, I've already overcome it. Remember, have faith. I'm on my way. Jesus is telling us to have faith in him that he is going to work it out for us. Now, as we see that he tells us that we're going to go through some tribulation. Psalms 23, verse 4. Psalms 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me, thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see that? You must walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You must go through to get to. So, Like I say, we can't, he is not going to avoid us from the trouble. He is going to show you his power in the midst of the trouble. He says, I will protect you in the midst. Now, the last part of Romans 12, 12 is this. Continuing instant in prayer. Don't quit praying. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spoke a parable unto them unto this end, 
that men ought to always to pray and not to faint. He wants us to always to pray and not faint. Because whenever we're praying, it focuses us on him. Whenever we're not praying, our eyes is on the situation. You remember Peter when Jesus came walking on the water at night and Peter said, if that's you, Lord, bid me to come. The Lord says, come. He started off good. He was focused on Jesus. Then he started looking at the waves and all of that, and he sunk. Whenever we take our eyes off of Christ, we will faint, we will sink. So prayer focuses us on the Lord. One other one I wanted to give, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Whenever we pray, we can say, hey, the Lord is working it out for me. And I believe that he will protect me. You're having faith in him. So I want you to take this scripture, Romans 12, 12, and look at it for a minute. It's a very short verse. It should be a memory verse of yours. You should have it remembered before we're done today. Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Wow. I want you to take a look at tribulation in this verse. Look at the position of tribulation in this verse. It is smack dab in the middle. What is this telling us? The Lord is telling us that he surrounds us with hope. He surrounds us with prayer in the midst of our tribulation. You know, I think about a hurricane or a tornado. There's peace in the center of them. When we are in the center of the will of God, we have peace and safety. Peace and safety won't come by the United Nations, I'm telling you. Peace and safety will only come by Jesus Christ. Tribulation is surrounded by hope. We must have hope in Jesus that he will do what he says. I want to encourage you Christians today. Yeah, times are bad, but rejoice. This is what this verse says. Rejoice in the hope. He is at the door. He's ready to come. He told us that these things were coming. Why are we getting bitten out of shape? Saying, thank you, Jesus. He will protect us. And then he says, be patient. Be patient in this tribulation you're going through. He told you that you're going to go through it. Just hold on. I'm on the way back, he's saying. I'm at the door. Be patient in tribulation. And then... He tells us to continue instant in prayer. Good Lord Almighty. He says continue instant in prayer. But what are we continuing in? When we get mad, we start cussing. When we get mad, we start doubting. When we get mad, we start fighting. But he says be con continuing instant in prayer. We should be able to pray in an instant because it connects us to God. Whenever we need him, we need to pray instant. So I want to encourage you with this verse tonight, this, this morning, is that we need to rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, and continuing instant in prayer. Jesus said, have faith, I'm on the way. My last scripture is this, Romans 1.17, and we'll close. Romans 1, 17. And this is my sister Tracy's favorite verse, and I started quoting it all over the place because we need it in a time such as this. Romans 1, 17 says this, For herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just 
shall live by faith. Wow. Are you living by the faith of Jesus? We want to change so many things and do so many things. I had a young minister contact me last week and was asking me, hey, um, he called me pastor. He said, hey, Pastor Speller, what can we do other than pray and vote? And I sent them this scripture and I, to encourage him to say, hey, we have to just have faith that God will do what he says. I'm asking you out there, do you have faith that God will do what he says? He already told us that these things were going to happen. He says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. If they must, if we want to see Jesus, these times have to come. But I want you to rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, and continuing instant in prayer. Now, if you can't do that, that means you haven't received Jesus Christ. You have no hope. The Bible tells us the wrath of God abideth on you. Jesus Christ is the hope of glory. If you have not confessed your sins before the Lord and say, go before the Lord and say, I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you sent your son to die for my sin. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. If you haven't done that seriously, you are not going to be able to stand. So I'm going to ask you right now, for those that have not received Jesus Christ, it is your time today to accept Jesus. If you would, bow your head and say this prayer. But just remember, if this prayer won't save you unless you believe it in your heart. Let's bow. Father, it's once again that we come. Lord God, I come now confessing I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the grave. I accept him now into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you've done that, we would love to hear. Go to minutesoftruth.org, click on the contact form, and we'd love to send you some message, some more information. But make sure that you share this message if you was encouraged. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.